Okay, so uh, it's uh, really a pleasure to be at this fest, at least uh, virtually. I really apologize to you, Bear, for not being there in person, but okay, things of life combined in such a way that was difficult for me to come, but I would have really wished to do so. And during my talk, I will discuss uh, one aspect of Uber uh, research that he was involved in the, in the last 15 years, for, uh, that is the entanglement, and that until now was touched only by Jerome yesterday, and that Jesper didn't mention at all in the review of the last years. Um, uh, but it's definitely something that on which our research interests crossed a lot in the last years. And uh, indeed, we are even collaborating on something that uh, sooner or later will appear. But OK, in this talk, I will uh, discuss one aspect of entanglement, that is this symmetry resolution. That's something very relatively new, and that is probably new to most of the people in the audience. So I hope the goal of the talk will be to convince you, maybe you bear in particular that this uh, new way of looking at entanglement is really something interesting. And okay, just to fix the notation, let's uh, let's remember what is the entanglement. Okay, we consider the entanglement of a pure state. We consider a bipartition of the Hilbert space in two parts that we call A and B. This state usually is not a product state. And so one can define the reduced density matrix as the trace over the degrees of freedom B of the total of the projector on the state, that is the total density matrix. And the entanglement entropy is nothing but the von Neumann entropy of this uh, reduced density matrix. Uh, this is a good measure of bivartite entanglement between the two parts. And we will use, as Jerome did yesterday, also the Rainy entropy, which are defined as uh, the logarithm of the, of the moments of the reduced density matrix. This is just to set up the notation. It's probably everyone in the audience is aware of it. What is new here is that now we consider a state psi, which is symmetric under the action of some charge Q, which means that the uh, density matrix rho commute with Q. We usually, we are interested in a local charge, like for example, the particle number of the spin in some direction or in all direction. And this charge are local in the sense that can be written as the sum of a part acting only on A and a part acting only on B. And since there is this additivity, the fact that the rho and Q commute implies that when we take the trace over B, even the reduced density matrix commutes with the charge restricted to A. This commutation implies that the reduced density matrix we are considering rho A as a block diagonal form in the basis of the diagonalized the charge Q. So we can write rho A as a block diagonal form in which each block corresponds to a given uh, value of the charge. Okay, you can think to a U1 charge for the moment and Q is just the number, value of the charge or the particle number, for example. Okay, if the, uh, in, uh, in formula, this representation, you just write that the reduced density matrix is the direct sum of the density metric projected on the sector Q of a given charge, okay? And we write each element in this sum as PQ times rho AQ, where PQ is the probability of being in sector Q defined as the trace of the projector times the total density, the, total, the reduced density matrix in all the spin sector. Okay, so this is the probability of being in sector Q. And the operator that is left is uh, the reduced density matrix within the sector. And notice that this object with this, taking out this PQ is normalized in such a way that trace of rho AQ is equal to one. And so it's a uh, well-defined density matrix nor properly uh, normalized. And so we can define its symmetry resolved entanglement as the uh, of the sector Q as the reduce uh, as the von Neumann entropy of the of this uh, density matrix within the sector Q. Okay. I hope all this is clear because it's the basic definition 
uh, that we are going to use. If you have any question on the definition, please interrupt me because it's, uh, it's important to have clear what is the object and what are the proper normalization to make things nice. It seems that there is no question I go over. How we write now the total entropy in terms of this reduced density matrix. Okay, one can just think erroneously that the total entropy is just the sum of the entropy in each sector, but this is wrong. The total entropy has two contribution one, which is the sum of the entropy in each sector, weighted by their probability, obviously. And there is also this other object here, uh, which is the classical entropy constructed with probability PQ, okay, which uh, stands for the fluctuation of the charges within the various sectors. Okay? So there are two objects here, one which is usually called configurational entropy, which is the weighted sum of, uh, uh, of various entropy in various sectors, and this object that is called in the literature number entropy, a name that I don't like at all, but uh, everyone are uh, using this uh, uh, name and so we cannot change which is the uh, how much the charge we are considering fluctuates okay to make some pictorial presentation we can go to this paper by the uh, experimental group of harvard uh, by the michel uh, by marcus Greiner group in this paper they measure the symmetry of the entanglement and they measure the uh, the, the rainy and the rainy symmetry at all, and they were able to measure these two objects independently. And then this nice cartoon to explain the difference. The number entanglement is due to the superposition of states with different uh, particle number within A, okay? While the configuration entanglement is given to states, to the superposition of states that have exactly the same particle number within A, but they have different configuration. That's why it's configurational entanglement. Okay, and uh, they introduced these uh, objects in their paper in 2019, just two years ago, to explain uh, something that was around in the literature since many years, in the theoretical literature. Actually, uh, they were studying the growth of the entanglement entropy in a many body localized system, a subject that was studied previously numerically by the group of, by Frank Pullman together with Joel Moore in back in 2011, and then was explained theoretically by Ewood Altman and Bosk, but they none of the previous study dig in the origin of the phenomenon that was the following. The entanglement entropy in time grows quite quickly at the beginning, then they, it, it shows a plateau, and finally it starts growing again much slower like log t. Okay, uh, and this was a there was a theory explaining this, but that was not understood yet. What, if there is any difference between this first growth and this second growth after, and what they did in this experimental paper, they made even a bit of theory. Well, they were able to understand that this first fast growth is due to the number and that the particles immediately start fluctuating between one subsystem and the other. Okay, and so the entanglement, the number entanglement grows immediately, but there, are, there is no configuration entanglement yet. In fact, they stay flat to zero. This is shift just for convenience in this plot. And it starts growing on the after, like log t. Okay, and in fact, the sum of the two contribution gives exactly the total entanglement that is written here. So the, this is an example of the first one in the picture that I'm aware of, which shows how it's interesting to look not only to the total entanglement entropy, but to look at this symmetry solution because it contains a lot of physics. And okay, it's really a bit shameful that this uh, finding appeared in an experimental paper and not in a theoretical one, but okay, that's uh, probably we theoreticians were not thinking enough to this problem before. And actually the, this manuscript was really the one that made me uh, interested a lot into this uh, subject. Okay, and now uh, uh, it's a very new subject, as I said, but there are really already many work. Okay, here I put a call chart of everything that has been done. Okay, what I managed to collect, there is even more probably. 
saying some results. The first work is surely the one in 2014 by Nikola Lafrenzi and Seven Russian, where they made, this was mainly a numerical work where they show that there is a, a division of the entanglement between the various sectors, but there was no much understanding of it before of a seminal paper studying the entanglement in, in conformal field theory by uh, Moshe Goldstein and Aaron Sela, that is dated back just to 2018, three years ago. And after this work, there were really a number of papers in many different subjects, as you see from here. In particular, there were studies in CFT, that uh, uh, some papers are listed here. There were studies for lattice free fermion, and some papers are listed here. Our favorite technique integrability has been applied by myself with my collaborators. And we use two different techniques that are corner transfer matrix for lattice model and the form factor bootstrap for integrable field theory. Okay, where we also use the expertise of uh, Olaja that maybe is there among the, uh, in the audience, in the physical audience. Uh, then we studied three quantum field theory by using techniques of uh, Cassini and Werther. There have been studies in holography. There have been studied for disorder system. Uh, the negativity has been studied a lot and it's quite an interesting subject uh, for symmetry resolution of negativity. Non-equilibrium setting has been studied in several several different uh, subjects like local quenches, global quenches, or even transport properties. Uh, they were been studied by all these people. And topology, last but not least, topology is always one of the main uh, character of entanglement, and has been studied especially by the Aaron and uh, collaborators. Okay, obviously I cannot talk about all these uh, studies, so I will focus on very few results. I will focus on CFT, this, which is the, the core also of this conference, so everyone likes. I will say how CFT applies to lattice free fermion. I don't think I will have much time after, but if I have time, I can discuss uh, either negativity or the non-equilibrium physics. I don't think I can discuss both. I don't think I can discuss any, so let's just move without further ado. So we should, just uh, on this, I will thank uh, uh, Jerome that yesterday already explained how to construct the entanglement entropy impact integral. Uh, I just remind that he explained very nicely what we did in 2004 with John. Uh, okay, that was, uh, as he said, you can construct, I will go very briefly because Jerome already did. So you can construct the reduced density matrix by uh, leaving open cut on cylinder of circumference beta. And then from this, you can construct the moments of the reduced density matrix for integer n as the partition function on this n seed-driven surface in which the various sheets are uh, uh, joined cyclically uh, in, uh, along A, exactly like shown in this uh, uh, in, in this um, plot here. Okay, from this partition function can be evaluated by conformal mapping technique. It's just everything is very standard. And one, by making this mapping, one realizes that uh, uh, this partition function is equivalent to a two-point function on the plane of uh, uh, an orbifold theory where the, uh, the two-point function of some twist field, which has scaling dimension c over 12 n minus 1 over n. And we will see a proper definition just after. This is what is known for the total entanglement entropy, which was uh, needed to set up the stage. And I remind the, the result that Jerome already reminded yesterday that the entanglement entropy in CFT is proportional to one third of the central charge time log rates of the uh, subsystem length. How to modify this approach to get the symmetry resolution? Let's start with the U1 symmetry resolution, which is what was done in the paper by uh, Moshe Goltz and Terra Sela. And what we want to calculate is the symmetry of the Rene entropy defined as the logarithm of the moments of the uh, reduced symmetric within the subtext sector. If one sees this formula and tries to evaluate, what one requires is the resolution of, uh, of the spectrum of the reduced symmetric with, with Q, which is very difficult and likely impossible. The idea that uh, Ed, Gossan, and Sela that uh, after uh, is just a Columbus X, but okay, you need to think of Columbus X before getting it, is to study the, uh, 
the equivalent generating function for this object, thinking of this object as a probability distribution function, which means they introduce the charged moments as trace of rho a to the n times e to the i qa alpha, where uh, alpha is the parameter of the generating function, and then the charged, uh, uh, from the charge moment, the uh, symmetry resolved moments are nothing but the Fourier transform in alpha, okay? Like usual, like we usually do for the uh, probability distribution function and full company statistics. And in this notation, the probability PQ of giving it, of being in sector Q is just the Z1 of Q, okay? For uh, which is the usual uh, Z1, of alpha is the usual generating function of the probability Q, but now we generalize with this strange object here, which is not even normalized. In fact, Z1 of Q is not equal to one. Uh, this object Zn of Q are not normalized to one. And in fact, the symmetries of the entropy are the logarithm of the Zn of Q divided by Z1 Q to the n in such a way to make this of Zn of Q properly normalized. And uh, the limit for n that goes to one easily gets as derivative, or just by taking the limit and that goes to one of this object. Okay, so this is the main trick: studying the generating function of this object, and then trying to find the analytic continuation, which is possible. And for the single interval of the CFT, this is very easy. Because even this Zn of alpha is nothing but the partition function in the presence of this charge flux here. So is the partition function on the n-sheeted Riemann surface in the presence of this charge flux. What does it mean that there is this charge flux here? That the fields take a total phase alpha when going around this endpoint. We can put this phase alpha wherever we want here. We can divide equally between the points or we can put all in one sheet, there, there is no preferred prescription. In CFT, what is convenient is to put all the phase between the first and the last sheet or arbitrary between two sheets, okay? In such a way that uh, the modified or charged twist field that we generate now is as the usual action of just moving one of one, uh, uh, sheet when you are within A, but it takes a phase alpha where you pass when the sheet I that you are considering is exactly A. Okay, I hope this is clear. Please interrupt me if not. Fabian, you are an expert of these things. Is it everything clear? Because, okay, talking without seeing anyone is difficult. Okay, so we put this phase, uh, this phase is put conventionally just between two consecutive sheets because it's easier. Like, for example, when we discuss the form factor bootstrap, this prescription would break the symmetry of the replicas, and so it's not really convenient in the form factor bootstrap, which is something very democratic, is this convenient to share this phase between the various uh, uh, sheets and makes equation much easier, but we are not in that. A case we are in the, uh, we are in CFT and so it's more convenient to do so because if you do so you just realize that the the scaling dimension of uh, this object is nothing but the scaling dimension of the uh, of the standard twist field plus the scaling dimension of the generator of this charge divided by n in such a way that the charge partition function we are searching for is nothing but some constant times L to the minus C over six N minus one over N, which is standard term, minus twice H alpha plus H alpha bar uh, divided by N. Let's take an example of the U1 charge in CFT and let's consider the compact boson to be clear. Okay, so the action of the compact boson is known to everyone in this audience. The conserved charge of the compact boson also is known to everyone, and it's just the, 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 the density is the derivative of the field, and so the charge is just the integral over the subsystem of the derivative with standard normalization of Q pi, which is consistent with this one. Then the, the 
it, the power, the exponential power of the charge is nothing but the integral of this derivative, which means it gives back the field. And so this exponential is just e to the i alpha divided by pi phi, calculated in u, minus e to the minus i alpha phi, calculated in v, where u and v are the two uh, endpoints of the subsystem A under consider uh, uh, consideration. Hence, the, you one can read the holomorphic dimension of this uh, uh, exponential from this part here, and the anti-holomorphic part one reads from this other object, and it's just equal to one half alpha divided by two pi square k, which is the standard dimension of the vertex operator in CFT. So the charge moments we are searching for, as calculated by Gorton and Sela, are nothing but what is given in this formula. Okay, so it's the in alpha the probability is just a Gaussian, which uh, it's a Gaussian with a width that is proportional to log f, as written here. We can uh, extract then the charge, uh, the charge moments by making Fourier transform of this guy. The Fourier transform of an exponential is an exponential, okay. And here we took care of making a proper expansion of our gel to keep all terms and up to order of one to see up to order of one what happened to the charge moment and to the CFT. So if the generating function is a Gaussian, the free transform of a Gaussian is a Gaussian, okay? And that's uh, clear in Q with the width proportional to log L plus some constant. Uh, okay? Now, the very interesting fact is if we construct the symmetry resolved entanglement by taking log of this guy divided by z1 to the n, many things cancel. And okay, the symmetry resolved entanglement is equal to the total entanglement entropy at order L. So at order log L, the symmetry resolved entanglement is just the total entanglement. And this fact was called entanglement equipartition by Javier Alcaraz and Sierra in this seminar paper of 2018. But actually, there is something more compared to what Javier Alcaraz and Sierra did, is that not only the order log L of the entanglement is, is the same for each sector, but even the subleading term up to order or up to order one, which are the ones that you can build within CFT, are all the same. In fact, there is a log log term that is minus one half log, okay, it can be written in this way, a log log term, which is the same for each sector, there is an order one term, which is log gain divided two minus one minus log gain, that also is the same for each sector, and the objects that start breaking the partition are just going to zero as L goes to infinity, like we will see in a moment how they will go, okay? So there is this equipartition among the symmetry sector, which is extremely interesting, and okay, it was not very clear from all previous studies before Javier Alcaraz and Sierra pointed this out. Okay, so the first thing that appear here is that the uh, first curiosity could be that in the symmetry of the entanglement, there is this factor log, log log L, but there is no log log term in the total entanglement. From where it comes from, okay, this is the, the, the answer is very easy, is just the number entropy that we introduced before. So it's important to always keep in mind that the total entropy is this configurational entropy. Okay, so PQ as Q, but in this case, as Q doesn't depend on Q, so we just get sum of PQ, which makes one. Okay, and S is equal to the single sector entanglement time uh, minus this. Uh, uh, number entropy, and if one compute the number entropy by using PQ that comes from Z1 Q, which one can read from this formula, okay, by making all this thing, one sees that the number entropy is in fact log log L, which exactly cancels this log log L here, and actually cancels also these terms of order one, one uh, which is one alpha, and that goes to one. Okay, so this is very important, you see that there is this additional log log term, which is canceled by the number entropy. And there is also some other observation, is that the number entropy 
okay, which in this formula is just one contribution to total entropy, actually is always subleading in the entropy. And this fact is valid much more generally, and in fact, like in, especially in uh, many body localization, it's a fact studied a lot, for example, by the group of Yesco sisters and by uh, uh, Fleshauer. It's a very well known and general fact. Actually, for free Fermion, you can prove it that is low. It's always the number entropy of, is of the order of log S of the total entropy, but it's a much more general fact, as we will see in some cases after. Now it's interesting to study last three fermion. That's what we did in this paper of uh, two years ago with Ricardo Bonsignori and Paola Ruggiero. The, my main interest to study lattice three fermion was not only to apply Fisher Artivi technique that we studied a lot with Fabian Scully, sorry, 10 years can I, ago. Can I ask a question? Yes, about sure. The previous transparency. I mean, so if K becomes now, depending on your convention, large or small, so you're close to a free boson. Yes. Um, then this term becomes very large. And is there a physical picture? Wh why? This yes, because the symmetry becomes different. That's the problem. Uh, the free body, the free boson basically loses the U1 symmetry. Okay. You are, you, are mm -hmm. you have a free boson, which is a real free boson here. The charge in the the charge that you can see easily in the fermionic case, which is just a phase, in the bosonic uh, picture is uh, topological, which means it's additive and it's related to the compactification radius. Okay, mm -hmm. when you send to infinity or to zero the compactification radius to to get the non-compact uh, bosonic CFT, uh, in this case the, the, the U1 symmetry get, gets lost. And that's why this, this diverge. There is no, we are talking about nothing for the free boson. Okay, to get a U1 symmetric free boson, you need to take a complex boson and symmetry is realized in a different way. Okay, thanks, yeah. Is it clear? Okay. Now, thanks, the question is very, uh, <laughs> uh, was very proper just the okay. case. There was no time to discuss everything. So the, one of the main reasons why uh, we started this the lattice realization of the free fermions was not only to use fischer artwick that uh, me and Fabian liked a lot uh, many years ago, but was to understand how and why this FT partition is broken. Okay, up to order one, that is what CFT predicts, we don't see any uh, breaking of FT partition. We want to see where and how this FT partition is broken. And so one can use fischer artwick technique to calculate this charge moment exactly. And one obtained this very nice formula. In this very nice formula, one recognizes the various pieces of CFT that were here, okay? And these pieces of CFT, CFT are the, the mean value of the charge. Okay, this is just a shift. The important thing, prediction of CFT is this one, which is the scaling dimension of the composite to its field that we just already arrived in the slide before, and there is this additive constant. And inside this additive constant, there is the breaking of equipartition. Okay? The, this additive constant is an exact expression that one can derive with fish artery, which is written here. By making the Fourier transform of this expression, by keeping this guy here, okay, one obtained the uh, the symmetry resolve entropy, where one gets the total entanglement entropy, the log log term, where we the sum in this delta n, the one over log L term, the order one term, which is exactly what we computed by CFT. And then there is here, finally, the first term breaking equipartition, at order one over log L squared. Okay, so equipartition is broken, but at order one over log L squared. One over log L are difficult to see. Okay, fortunately, we have an exact prediction for the uh, prefactor. And if we want to analyze, if one analyzes numerical data, these are the numerical data, okay, for the symmetry of the entropy in the value sector. This is the sector Q equal to zero, this is the sector Q equal to one, and this is the sector Q equal to two, different from the mean value, I mean. And you see that it almost appears like there is a constant shift between them, okay? So, like, it's an order one if partition breaking, but this is not at all the case. Since we know everything exactly, we can plug 
the exact formula here with this one over log L square correction and see that in fact this one over log L correction are exactly on top of the data, both for the von Neumann entropy and for the uh, second Rene entropy and also for the other, obviously, as you increase the order of the Rene entropy, the agreement is worse, as always happens in this kind of computation. Okay, so this is one of the first nice things that we see that there are terms breaking the partition, which are full lattice aspect that appears at this order here. Okay, and we are very happy of this result. Actually, we can use this uh, one-dimensional result to study also what happened in two-dimensional uh, free fermion and boson. That's what we did in this other paper with Sara Mushano and Paolo Ruggiero again, by using the trick called dimensional reduction. This is a completely trivial trick that for some reason has been completely overlooked in the literature. I think there are, uh, is mentioned in some paper by uh, in Gopeschel, there is something uh, uh, by Robert Koenig. Robert maybe is online, I don't know. But very few people use this trick, which is very trivial, actually. Uh, what you, if the geometry you are considered as a cylindrical uh, symmetry, like in a cylinder or in a torus, uh, a two-dimensional object now we are considering, what you can do is to pass to mixed uh, space in which you take the Fourier transform in the transverse axis and you keep the real axis here in order to start the entropy. In this mixed representation, you have just N realization of the uh, of free system, each one with its, uh, its own dispersion relation that you can compute exactly. And there is something that in fact, it's very easy by using this formalism to show that in, for free fermion you have logarithmic correction to the area low, while for free, free boson not, because for free fermion there is an extensive number of uh, gapless chain, while for free boson there is only one gapless, all the other one get gapped by making this trick. And so there is area low plus log L for free boson, while there is L log L for free fermion. This is the easiest way to see uh, this phenomenon that we were very surprised that was not noticed before in the literature. And okay, we notice uh, for the charge entropy, where here we report our results for the symmetry resolved entanglement entropy, both for fermion and boson. That the numerics against theory, they agree very well, and I don't want to insist more on this. What I want to show is what happened for non abelian symmetry. This is a very recent paper that is now in, pub, uh, uh, in publication in JF that we did with Sarah Murchan again, with Jerome Dubail that is there, and uh, by myself. And it's, I think, okay, I will make a very long, short story, very short, because this was quite a difficult project, quite a difficult, because it put together so many aspects of the West Lumina Witten model that took us quite some time to get the right answer. And hopefully to get one right answer, I should say more than the right answer, because there are more than one right answer. So what we did is to consider a general non-abelian group G that has dimension D and the volume we call volume G, according to the R measure as usual. And of this, we consider the corresponding resume we can model. The reduced density matrix now can be written as sum over the irreducible representation R. With that, that appear with a given probability PR, and there is a reduced density matrix within that representation that we denote by rho R. M. Okay? So R here labels the reduced representation of G. Each reduced representation is dimensioned in G. Now, um, uh, actually, we should say that SU2 was done in a particular case by Goldstein and Sela by using explicit SU2 algebra, so a method that is not generalizable to what to general case. Our strategy here, yeah, without mentioning many highly non-trivial points and many assumptions that we did, is to write the charge moment as linear combination of their specialized character, then use the, their modular properties to compute symmetry resolved partition function, 
And for doing so, we should identify all states with a given representation. And then the symmetry of the the entropies are obtained as usual, integrating over the group characters, but now around all the saddles that appear. And we find out that saddles that appear in this computation are all the elements of the center Z, G, uh, and the order of this we denote by absolute value of ZG. Okay, so this is quite complicated. And actually, we also made the assumption that all the, the elements of the center are the only saddles. We don't have a way to prove it at all. For SUN, you can see it, but in general, you cannot see. And this is our final result that we have. There is the, the, the entropy of the representation is the total entropy, as before, which is the only term at order L. There is a log log L term, even in this case, but now the prefactor here is the dimension of the group. So it's very nice that the first subleading term encodes the dimension of the group. Okay? This is, in principle, could be a way to find out the dimension of the group in a numerical simulation. Okay? This is extremely nice. Then what we find is that the order one term is universal. Okay, there is no the, the cutoff is all inside here. So even in this case, uh, the order one term is universal, and this order one term depends on many aspects. Okay, which depends only on the group, which is the volume g, the number of elements in the center, some numerical factor that we don't care too much. But there is also a dependence on the dimension of the representation here. Okay, so the equipartition is broken at order one in this case, not at order R, but in a very universal way. And by the way, this very nice formula that you see here, we find out a posteriori that there's some connection with the symmetry resolution of the H theory discussed, discussed by Cassini Huerta, by Ignacio Sirac and uh, Marie Carmen Banus and many other people. Okay, so it has some in it has some connection, although it's, uh, it's a bit different, the origin of the value of but it's very similar. Okay, and I think, again, here, it's important that all these elements that are very important group elements of the theory, like the dimension of the group, volume of the group, etc., do not appear in the total entanglement entropy. In the total entanglement entropy, as usual, you just see the central charge, which has no indication about these important group uh, elements, which can be seen from the subleading term in this very nice way. Okay? And in particular, the dimension of the group can be seen here, which is the most important object, which does not depend on the representation nor on the measure. The dimension of the group is the most universal character and appear in this first subleading term. Okay. So this stop. Uh, mm, my part that I really wanted to make. And now, okay, I have five minutes left. I could talk either about what happened after a quench or about the negativity. I leave to the audience the decision. Actually, we should leave to Hubert, that is the... Yeah, he said quench. Hubert, you prefer to see non-equilibrium or negativity? Oh, I'd rather hear about quenches, yeah. Okay, then let's go to quenches. Uh, what we did in this paper that okay, should still appear, uh, now I'm making a, a brief review about quenches, that is that if you prepare the initial system in a low uh, entangled initial state psi naught, and then you evolve with the Hamiltonian, there is this uh, famous quasi-particle picture by myself and John uh, that then has been refined to describe any integrable system by myself and Vincenzo that should be connected uh, uh, online. Uh, in which the entanglement entropy is nothing but the, the, uh, given by the number of quasi-particles shared between A and B that are emitted from any point after the quench. Okay? And the formula is given here. To make a long story short, what we did with Gil Paretz and Ricardo Bozzignori was to show that even the charge moment satisfy a, a quasi-particle picture formula that is written here, okay? Actually, we conjecture this formula like on the same uh, foot that is conjectured here for the gen more general integrable model. And actually, it's very difficult to compute 
even to conjecture a specific form for this kernel here for the charge moment, what we can do for free fermion is both to have an educated conjecture and that actually make a, a proper uh, calculation by means of uh, multidimensional stationary phase approximation and to get the exact formula of the kernel that appears here. Okay, like for example, here for the quench for the niche case uh, from from the nil state to uh, with, uh, just free fermion, this kernel can be computed and, and is just given by log of positive alpha. So the charge moment is nothing but this positive alpha with some normalization to this object here, which, which we call calligraphic J in this formula. And you see that numerics with uh, the quasi particle picture agrees perfectly and uh, for the charge moment. But what this structure of the quasi particle implies for the symmetries of the entropy, that's the interesting part. Okay, and you see that here you have a cosine, and what a cosine does is to shift the setup. Okay, so it's a very important object, it's not some uh, irrelevant factor that makes nothing. The saddle is shift by this in making the symmetry resolution. And what it does, it provokes a delay time, which is proportional to delta Q, to the shift from the singular value. So what, what you have in general for the fermion, but actually since this form, we, sorry, we think is valid in general, this is a very general fact. There is a delay time that is proportional to delta Q in general. And this delay time is calculable in free fermions just equal to pi delta Q divided by four, which comes from the shift of the sandal that comes from here. Okay. And this delay time is also a very nice physical interpretation. It's just the time needed to change the charge within A of the amount delta Q. Okay, since the information propagated at finite speed, you need some time to flip a given number of spin, a minimum number of spin. And you need at least to flip a given number of spin or to move a, an amount of charge in order to create that sector. Okay, and you see that this is uh, the prediction from quasi particle picture agrees very well, even in the Fourier transform. You have uh, uh, the various sector here. This is the sector zero, this is a sector like 10. That after a couple of time take place, there is like sector 20, sector 30, and 40. They all are shifted exactly like predicted. Okay. And actually, even the shape here is just calculable. Uh, the, uh, okay. What we also find is the equipartition for small delta Q. Okay. In fact, the number and entropy are all the same. And there is some uh, breaking at order the Q square, okay, that's a Q square exactly like before. Is something that grows like L because this object here is this JN are just as usual this character, this minimum between two VK, okay, and this is order L in the uh, space time scaling limit. And the number entropy that you get in this way is just one half log T also. Okay, that you can compute from the uh, uh, from the probability. Uh, obviously, uh, so as I was saying before, the entropy grows like t, but number entropy grows like log t. It's subleading exactly like before. Okay, and so these are some general features. And actually, well, Pascale, we can discuss you, also. Pascale, you should wrap up. You should wrap up now. I finished. This is the last right slide. Now. Okay. I want to show that this is uh, what happened after the quench is not only something to be done by theoretician, but it's uh, we also published some experimental work with a group of Innsbruck by with uh, Peter Zoller and other. Okay, the only problem with ion trap experiment is that uh, there is not only the Hamiltonian dynamic, the Hamiltonian, but there is also some dissipation, which is uh, some Lindblad like the one that Fabian will write. It's written here, the dissipation that usually appear in this ion trap experiment. And now here we observe something extremely funny by looking at the experiment, okay? We find basically that the symmetries of the entropy, instead of increasing as usually do, they decrease. So that means the purity increase, 
okay? While the total entropy obviously increase and the purity diminish, we find that, this, uh, that some sector, actually the sector one, the sector zero does what it, it should do, but the sector uh, one, instead of decreasing the purity, it increases. So there is a sort of dynamical purification, okay, that can be understood in perturbation theory in gamma, and that this high stress is not present if the system is purely dissipative or the system is purely Hamiltonian, uh, as we have seen, but this is a strange interplay that happened only at intermediate time, because at later time the, uh, the, uh, the purity always decreases and the system becomes less pure. And it's a very peculiar uh, effect that is given by the interplay between these two uh, cases. And we observe first experimentally and then we, uh, okay, we reproduce numerically the part that dashed line here, and then we also uh, explain within perturbation theory. And that's all I will stop here. I will keep all the negativity. And what I want to stress the main message here that the symmetry solution of entanglement provides a final structure of the entanglement of physical state. And some feature that I want to stress, it's measurable experimentally. Actually, it has been already measured. It's very easy to compute for theoretician via charge moment. And something that I didn't discuss here is related to many interesting objects that already exist in the literature, like charge statistics and Tango and Hamiltonian. And OK, so here I just shown a tip of the iceberg of what is done, much more there is. And I want to finish by saying happy birthday, Hubert. And I'm done. Thank you very much, Pasquale. Okay, so we're slightly over time, but if there's any any uh, questions, we can take them. Hubert? Yeah. Ciao, Pasquale. This is Hubert. Ciao. So, yeah, I was about to ask the relation to charge statistics, because w we know that in systems with U1 symmetry, there are a lot of similarities between the behavior of the entanglement and the behavior of the particle fluctuations. Um, yeah, the relation so is... Is this, is this explaining it somehow? Or yeah, it's okay. It was already explained. Now I don't want to uh, take... Uh, but as you see, this charge moment that we define here... Where are they? Where is the definition? The charge moment are just for n equal to one is the is the is the generating function of the of the charge statistics. So this is a, a more general object that includes also the the charge statistics. And you see that yes, the the fact that you have a log l uh, second moment etc. follows from all comes from that. From I the see. I wrote yeah. here. It's okay. not. It's not. Okay. It, it's z one. Q here is exactly that, but okay. That one Q was calculated by yeah. Okay, this and, you, and you and you said that the number entanglement is always much smaller than the other entanglement. Is this a theorem? Are there are no known counter examples where say the number part would be much larger than the the rest? No, no. In uh, so for free fermion, you can it has been proved. Yeah, sure. It's uh, just uh, in general, I think it's just a consequence of the central limit theorem. Okay, <laughs> not that I can really prove uh, in mathematical sense because okay, you need you need something to be big here. What is big? L is big, yes, but still it, there are many. You need something to be large, like in a massive theory, uh, to make large entanglement, you have to make the mass small. But if you are at some scale where nothing is large, obviously everything is of order one. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So, Thank you, Pasquale. But, okay. Okay, Pasquale, uh, thank you very much for, for a nice talk again. Yeah. yeah. So, Thanks to you. And 
so, so, so you started your talk by saying that you wanted to convince Hubert that uh, symmetry uh, resolved entanglement is a, is a worthwhile undertaking. He looks pretty convinced to me. So well ah, done. Okay. 